We have discussed anvils, anvil substitutes, how to silence your anvil, but we haven't really discussed much how to orient your anvil. And by that I mean where do the different features of the anvil need to be while you're working. When we discuss anvil orientation, it's easy to talk about right and left, but that assumes we're all either right-handed or all left-handed. I'm right-handed, so if I say right and you're left-handed, that would be the opposite. So I will try to use the terms hammer hand and tong hand, because that's universal. Even if you're left-handed, your hammer hand is still your hammer hand, and your tong hand is still your tong hand. So which is correct? Should your, the horn of your anvil, this is the thing that we discuss most when orient, orienting an anvil, although I don't think it's the most important consideration, should your horn be under the hammer hand, or should the horn be under your tong hand? This is a very hotly discussed issue among blacksmiths. There are some very strong opinions on which is correct and why it is correct. I'm not going to be that adamant about it because I think there's a whole lot of personal preference in this. But let's look at this orientation quickly. With your horn on your tong hand side, your tongs and your material go right to the horn very easily. It's very easy to make this switch. There's no movement. You don't have to step to the side to work over the horn. It's a very natural position. So if you work over the horn a lot, this may be the most convenient for you. In your typical London pattern anvil, that places the hardy hole under your hammer hand. And that means you have to move over a little bit to get to the hardy. Not a big deal. It's easy enough to step over there. But after you've cut this piece off and you come back to the anvil, that hardy is now very likely to be right where you're swinging absolutely a must. Never work on the face with a hardy in your anvil if your anvil hardy hole is under your hammer hand. Take that thing out so you don't hurt yourself. And those really are the two main features on a classic London pattern anvil, which is what most of us think of when we think of anvils. So with the horn on your tong hand, it's way more convenient. With the hardy hole under your hammer hand, it's less convenient and it can be more hazardous to you. With the horn under my hammer hand, which is the way my anvil is oriented, I have to take a side step to work over the horn comfortably. It's not a big deal. I'm used to it. It hardly slows me down. If I'm cutting off on the hardy or doing anything else under the hardy, it's right under my tong hand, and that's very convenient. And if I come back here to straighten this bar after cutting it off, or forget to remove the hardy, there is almost no chance I can strike my hand on that hardy. I would have to be working over here, and before my hand is over the hardy, my hammer is not even on the anvil anymore. And I don't generally work here. I work over here. So that makes the hardy a little more convenient and a little safer, but the horn has become less convenient. Now it's a good idea to remove the hardy tool all the time anyways, but I find that I often am doing production work and that tool is required every heat and the time spent to take that tool out, put it away, get it back out, slows me down, so I tend to leave them in there. I think the risk is quite minimal and it's a risk I'm willing to take. And this greatly increases my efficiency. That's a more convenient location. It's safer. I don't use the horn as much as I work over the face. So I'm perfectly happy with it that way. Again, the ideal thing is the hardy tool should come out every time you're through using it. In practice, I think that's unrealistic. And I have lots of tools that go in the hardy hole. Frequently I will be using the smithing magician for about half of every heat if I'm doing tenons and things of that sort. So it just lives there. With it over here, 
it's out of my way. I'm not going to hit my hand on that. I'd have to really be trying hard to, to get my hand over here to hit that. But if I was working in the, the hardy hole under my hammer hand, that would be super inconvenient and very dangerous. If you haven't figured it out, my preference is to have, on this style anvil, to have the horn under my hammer hand, have the hardy hole under my tong hand. I feel it is safer. I feel the slight inconvenience of having to step to the horn is negligible, and I've gotten used to that over the years. My anvil's been oriented this way for ages. Most of the time when I go to somebody else's shop or workshop or conference, their anvil is oriented the other way, and I can work that way, and I can remember to take the hardy tools out so I don't whack my hand on it. And it's not that big a deal. You'll get used to whatever situation you have. I think it's largely a matter of personal preference, but those are the, the two issues I think you need to look at. In the U.S., most of us think of the London pattern anvil when we think of an anvil. But the continental European anvil is a little bit different. They are frequently two horn anvils. One flat square horn is just a tapered heel, really. It's not, not as much truly a horn. And that's typically worked with on the right, or under the hammer hand. And that's where the pritchel hole is for punching. The horn is, if you have it under your tong hand, has the hardy hole next to the horn. So if the argument is that the horn is best under the tong hand and that the hardy hole is safer and more practical under the tong hand, the Europeans thought of this. Why the English didn't when they designed the London pattern anvil, I'm not sure. It's probably easier to punch the holes in the thin tail, I would assume. But this solves that problem. Some of these anvils will have a hardy hole on both sides. And that way you get your choice. So you get the best of both worlds, and you can still turn this the other way if you like it the other way. It's still a matter of personal preference which way you want your anvil to face. Now what about anvil height? While we're talking about this, most people describe anvil height as a standing relaxed and your knuckle should just rub the face of the anvil. Some of this depends on how thick a material you're working. If you're working tall material, a lot of big four inch stuff or bigger, you may want an anvil that's shorter because you've got to raise up to work that taller material. If you're working flatter material, you may want an anvil that is a little bit taller so you don't have to bend over. I don't like bending over. I like an anvil that is a little bit taller than most people do. For this one, I have to get my hammer to come flat. And this is really the key thing, is that your hammer face is flat on the material you're working on. So you have to take into account an average thickness of material and it needs to be comfortable. I have to hunch over just a little bit at this anvil to make that happen. Now my regular anvil is a little taller than that two-horn anvil. The two-horn anvil actually is my wife's anvil, so it's set for her height. And this I find a much more comfortable position. I don't have to lock my elbow as I come down to that swing. It's just short of that. It's comfortable. My back is straight. I don't have to hunch over. Although sometimes if I need to get close to see something, I'll still do that. But it does require taller material that I have to raise up a little bit, which is one reason I have this lower block right next to the anvil for upsetting and driving big tall drifts, things like that. And we'll discuss that block in a separate video, probably when we start talking about axe making. So those are just a few of the things you might want to consider when you're trying to decide how to set your anvil. If you haven't anchored it to a stand that's permanently attached or made a permanent stand, Experiment a little bit with the height to get comfortable. Try it with the horn to the left for a week or two. Try it with the horn to the right for a week or two. See what you like best. Think about the things I've said, why I think one might be better than the other. Think about safety. But in the long run, it's a personal choice. People will tell you that you are absolutely wrong if you do it this way or if you do it that way. I don't buy that. I think you can set your anvil the way you want to set your anvil. The only thing I wouldn't do I don't think I'd set it this way because I just don't see any practical use for it that way. But if you leave space around your anvil, you can get around it and you can work on whatever surface you want to work on. This whole thing is a tool. You aren't limited to here and here. If you need to work a bent piece down in here, you can do that. You can use this 
area where the feet are as a forming swedge if you need to. The whole thing is a tool, so having space to walk around your anvil really helps. So, just some ideas, some things to think about. I'm not going to tell you how to orient your anvil. I'm not going to tell you wrong if it's opposite of mine. That's your choice. Just think about it and make a good decision, and then get used to it. After a few years, you won't like it the other way, no matter what you did the first time or why you did it. I hope that helps some people out. hope that answers some questions. Love it if you give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Head out to the shop. Make something. Stay safe. Do wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you for the next one.